That's so awful. I can't believe it. You know, it's no, it's no picnic to watch these great institutions hang themselves. That's why we were supposed to be educating young people. We were supposed to be teaching them that, no, it's not always there. It's, it's fragile and you better take care of it because the default condition is authoritarian starvation. And if that isn't happening, it's a bloody miracle. It's what the hell's going on with the administration? I don't understand what they're doing. The sad truth is, is that as soon as a few people complain, everyone who isn't directly involved runs scared and looks for someone to sacrifice. Well, I guess part of the question that people who are watching might be asking is why the hell should they care about this? And the reason I believe that people should care about this, first of all, is that what happens in the universities ends up happening everywhere else very, very rapidly. Absolutely. And if it can happen to someone like you, it seems to me that it can happen to anyone at any time in any place. Absolutely. And this, this, this unbelievable cowardice that our institutions show in the, in the face of unwarranted allegations, as long as they're the right flavor, is something that should be tremendously worrisome to everyone. Self, stop this. And, and the idea that one of the great propulsions of a certain segment of Western society is simple envy and resentment of its success, even as those who are envious and resentful are basically being fed and kept by it. They go into these institutions with some sort of childish, immature and uh, animosity towards what, you know, if you think of it, the rise of thought is, is, is the greatest thing we have. And at the, in the richest part of the world, the most prosperous, the highest institution, have you been reading some of these whiteness things, the new rules? I don't know how a free people have succumbed so easily and so lethargically to a kind of, it's, it's not physical, but it's a metaphysical restraint. And the, the cowardice about some of these, these universities that apologize for some professor, the, 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 the New York Times guy, 49 years columnist, and, and in an explicatory conversation, using that N-word, editor said, no, nothing wrong with him, but then they fire him. Uh, we are displacing ourselves by allowing charlatans to wreck the intellectual standards of the Western world. I've been thinking about the question of the meaning of life and the first objection, I suppose, arose, that arose in my mind was an objection to the question itself because there might not be a meaning in life. There are places where people derive meaning. And, and you can list them and it's useful practically if people are thinking about how to organize their life, if they're unhappy and they want to know how things might be better. I mean, my observation, and obviously not only mine, is that people generally need to have a career or a job to keep the wolf from the door, but also to engage them productively with others, which is a primary source of meaning for conscientious people and for creative people alike. You need to be a, you need to pursue your education to, to flesh out your intellectual capacity. You have to take care of your health, physical and mental. You, you need an intimate relationship. You need a family. You need friends. You need intelligent use of your leisure time. You have to regulate your, your uh, susceptibility to the temptations that might lead you astray. But then there is a, a, a core to all of that around which these more practical endeavors arrange themselves. And that's something like attention to the spiritual or the philosophical domain or the religious domain. I think you can, in some sense, put all those together. And, and that might be, well, it might be that the attempt to answer explicitly or at least to address the question of, well, what is all of that practical life in service of? And you said, for example, that when you were working with the inner city kids in Halifax, you were trying to help them realize that the, they were meant for the higher things and vice versa. And someone might ask, well, what's the, so why bother with that when you can just bother with the skills? And it seems to me that the answer is something like, well, we all have to make decisions about how we're going to behave in life and how we're going to act ethically. And if you help people understand their relationship to what's ultimately noble, then you can help them fortify their their 
resolution to do good in the world instead of to do harm. It's, 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 it seems to me to be, I mean, I think we're always deciding with every decision that we make, whether we're going to do good or do harm by action or by inaction. And whether we should do good or harm or nothing at all, I think depends to some degree on who we think we are and, and what we're capable of. And it seems to me that the humanities, when they're, when they're properly taught, are the study of who we could be, each of us as individuals. And we need to know that because otherwise we'll be much less than we are. And, and that's, not a, that's not a trivial problem. It's a cataclysmic problem. I did a talk at Harvard four years ago, and I pointed out two things to the students in the audience. One was that a tremendous amount of civilization and effort had gone into producing the institution that they were now part of, and that everyone who was part of that institution was hoping that they would come there and learn everything they possibly could that was relevant and important and that they would be the best possible people they could be and they would go out in the world and do as much good as they possibly could. That was the essential mission of the enterprise. And that was really the case. And also that learning to write in particular was going to make them more powerful than they could imagine. And number of students came up to me afterwards and said, I really wish someone would have said that to us when we first came here. 